Orr presents The Silent Partners. This is Gary Butterfield. This is Cole Ross. And you can't hear the third chair because they are silent. Mm. Sphinx! <laughs> nice. yeah. That was them. <laughs> you couldn't, couldn't stay silent forever. Uh, on, silent leave. We're on, we're, we're on a run of silent leave. <laughs> Oh gosh. Oh, we're on a run of uh of, of Billy and Pete episodes. Got last one, we got we this are. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I you know and I like that. Mm-hmm. I like Billy and Pete. Uh this show, the writers of the show have so much contempt for Pete White. It's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Oh man, it's uh, just he, the, 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 there's very little redeeming about him. It is mm-hmm. it, it is quite good, and this has my uh, uh, my, my favorite description of Pete White uh, yeah. s- s- uh, shuffling from PlayStation to Xbox. <laughs> yes, the, uh, there's there's a couple really good uh, little bits in this. This is an episode that I liked a little bit more. This viewing, mm-hmm. um, knowing what's coming and what it's setting up. Yeah. I, I still think it's a little light on jokes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's like kind of some funny character moments, but it it's just a real plotty, yeah, kind of episode of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like it more than the last episode, and I think that it is pretty fun in general. Uh, I also have a personal connection to it because I had a fan theory about this episode. Oh, you that did? I think actually kind of bears out, but is has never been confirmed. What uh, what what, what is your fan theory, or do you want to wait until the moment comes up? Uh, I'll wait until the moment comes up. Okay. To to plant a sus- suspense grenade Ooh. to get people to listen to the episode until three fourths <laughs> of the way through before turning it off in disgust. Yeah, just feeling feeling filthy that they that they traded their time in exchange for whatever disappointing result is going to come. Yeah, a recap podcast. <laughs> um, this episode was written by Doc Hammer. Mm-hmm. Originally aired uh, on October twenty fourth, two thousand ten. Yeah, makes sense and lead up to Halloween. It is a it is a spooky episode. It is about mm-hmm. uh, it is it is about uh, Billy uh, thinking he's going to be draculated, but um, that is not mm-hmm. exactly the, the the case here. This is all about uh, the bill coming due for Conjectural Technologies' big payout earlier in the season, which like they didn't really make a point of that. Like there was no episode that was about them getting this check. It was just Mm-mm. like uh, a gag about them getting the money. Uh, from insurance fraud and then that money immediately being used for the ransom right yeah yeah they needed a reason to have the conjecture cycle yes like basically (laughs) uh billy gets kidnapped Mm -hmm. by these mysterious figures and forced to help monstroso uh and pete kind of uh urges sphinx to help him yeah yeah. uh, while pete hangs out with hatred in a in a safe room <laughs> it's so uncomfortable oh yeah. man uh just sleeping right next to the old, to the old christmas trees uh yeah. th- this is jackson's favorite episode of the season outside of, of the finale mm-hmm. um, uh, and i like the uh the insight into that in the commentary where it's like you you know it's his, your favorite episode because as a writer yes you know because it, it accomplishes a lot like mm-hmm. it's a it's a deft piece of writing yes this episode um you know again light on jokes but mm-hmm. deft on uh on plot yeah, there. and and also like this is the, this is a good looking episode too. Like the monstrosa oh, sure, yeah. stuff is really good, and there are like some really good visual gags in this as well. And you have to remember that you know we're we're, we're looking at this from a uh, from like a writing and like jokes perspective. Jackson always his priority seems to be on like what's the quality of animation that came back from the studio, or did like did this collaboration with this board artist end up working? Yeah, yeah, he's a real fan of classic animation, <laughs> um, babies, carters, etc. This is the beginning of Shoreling say, Shoreleave saying Sphinx, mm-hmm. uh, which I love. Yep, instead of the uh, uh, give, the soundtrack mm-hmm. going Sphinx every time something. I love says, Shoreleave so much. <laughs> give so me good. a Shoreleave solo show. <laughs> yep, like spin off Shoreleave. You know, just <laughs> yeah. he's so good. Yeah, in the next episode, he's so good. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Just like what a star! It is. It's probably my favorite Doc character. Yeah. That he voices. And that includes a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, that's real big. That includes that's Billy. All, that, includes, uh, that includes 21, you know? Yeah. Big, I, uh, I love Shoreleave so much. Yeah. 
yeah he's so good uh, oh gosh and like like mm. I, I i even li- like like the gag and i think they do it a couple of times where like somebody says sphinx and then he doesn't say it and then people look at mm. him and he goes oh wait yeah i missed my cue like it's real cute yeah they, they play up it's gotta be this is gonna make me sound so straight and okay. i'm just gonna just gonna say it it's one of my favorite gay characters in fiction okay they play it up constantly mm-hmm like he's about it, but he's so confident and so badass. <laughs> like I and and what he is is he is a straight dude's conception of an awesome gay character, yes. and that's why why I like him so much. Right, a, a gay person's conception of an awesome gay character might be different. Mm-hmm. You know, who knows? Right, I'd be curious if folk who are gay are into shore leave. Yeah, yeah. you know, if anyone has like mixed feelings about it, feels offended, or if anybody is just like, yeah, that's it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to me though, he just fucking rocks. Mm-hmm. Like he, he just he's he's so good. He's a it's it's a charismatic performance. He gets a lot of good stuff to do. Um, mm-hmm. you know, like they 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 give him fun lines, they give him fun scenes. Like he, finally, there's somebody whose badassness can like measure up to Brock's uh, as well. Yep. I like the way that they play off of each other. Um, oh, I love it. Like yeah. they're they're just like both very professional, and there's this like mutual respect mm-hmm. between them that's just like very good. Uh, mm-hmm. I love his relationship with Al. Yep. He's so cute in the next episode. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, I just yeah, uh, I, you know, people who whom star gay in in the listenership. Mm-hmm. Let me know is is this uh, problematic of me to be this big a fan of Shore Leave? Mm-hmm. Am I is there something I'm am I stepping on a rake without knowing it, or am I right that Shore Leave rocks? Yeah. Uh, please let me know from a social justice perspective if this is okay. Yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, but yeah, uh, surely just a constant joy. Yeah. Just every time he's on screen. I love it. <laughs> um, the, uh, we also get Robobo. Who I also love. <laughs> doesn't turn out to be a long running character. Nope. I just, uh, but is a centerpiece of the episode. I would say. It really is. Oh my gosh. Do people need to know who Bo Hazard is? Or yeah, sorry, but like Bo, Bo Duke, he lives in Hazard County. Yeah, of course. Of course they do. Like we're, and they also need to know who Asimo is. We're all, we're a million years old. Yeah. Nobody knows any of this shit. Yeah. Uh, so, so the Dukes of Hazard, it's like a 1970s sitcom, uh, t- t- took place in ha- the fictional County of Hazard, uh, Hazard County, Georgia. It's about this family of, uh, like ne'er do wells. I forget if they were explicitly bootleggers, but like they're, you know, uh, li- living dangerously on the wrong side of the law. Uh, always on yeah. the run from, uh, always on the run from, uh, boss hog, the, uh, boss hog, which bo- is what they have for the law in those parts. <laughs> yep. Cor- you know, cor- uh, corrupt, corrupt uh, sheriff. Hog. Yeah. Uh, starring Bo and Luke Duke, uh, who drove around in a car with a heat symbol on it. And oftentimes yep. that car did jumps. <laughs> yeah, it was a Nazi jumping car. And then they all had a, some kind of relationship with Daisy um, Duke, who may have been their sister or lover. I don't know. But that's where we get the name for uh, short jean shorts that ex- show part of the butt cheek. Yes, extremely short jean uh, jean shorts, which is like, you, you know, everybody knows to make the cut. But you also have to remember, you, you, need, you, need, you need to shorten the pockets, too. If, yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise you, it looks silly. You don't want the pockets it, hanging it on, like little elephant ears. Come on. No, it always felt like a good way to have a zipper crammed up your clit. Like, I, <laughs> it's not comfortable at all. Yeah. It's just like, jeans are not comfortable. Uh, right, right. You know, I was very surprised by that. And uh, <laughs> this is merged with Asimo, which is a robot that Honda made, which is this sad, pathetic, wretched little robot. <laughs> that, like, looked really pathetic. There's really great material in the commentary about how, how sad it looks. Yeah. It looks yeah. like they just, like, whipped him and then reprogrammed him. <laughs> like whenever you made a mistake and stuff yeah. he was very pathetic yes yeah this is uh, this is early on especially compared to like the really scary basically like mini- miniature metal gears that uh yes. that, that, that uh that, that like boston dynamics put out like this is i think back before a lot of people were on guard uh for like the way that these would be used for like policing and stuff so like yes. it was funny to watch this to, to watch this uh um robot man attempt to walk around um, yeah, fall very, down stairs and shit. Yeah, he was very, a clown to us. Very loudly, he was he was a clown to us, and like even back then, there were some jokes like "Ah ha ha, Skynet, this will be what they get us for," etc. No, it's not the robots that are going to get us; it's the people who program them because they're going to the be cops. People who add turrets to the robots. Yeah. <laughs> okay, who gave the robot yeah. a gun? Yeah, God damn it, Squirtle's got a gun. <laughs> it's not a drill ball with so far the gun. Uh, <laughs> oh man, uh, I think this is a fun commentary. 
Uh-huh. Uh, in general, uh, Doc relays a dream he has about being baby-sized at a party with Henry Rollins. <laughs> Henry Rollins falling in love with him and him having to break up with Henry Rollins. Yep. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that way, that makes its way into a into a joke on the show when uh, when the Sphinx people are illustrating how they have no secrets uh, from each other. Yes, uh, but it's just, it's just very funny having this erotic slash romantic dream about Henry Rollins as a straight man. And I gotta yeah. say, as a straight man myself, you know, sometimes uh, you look at that neck and you think, man, I could really hold on to that neck. Yeah. Yeah, every once in a while I dream you suck a little dick. Yeah, it's fine. As a straight dude, it just kind of happens. It's fine. It yeah. happens to all of us, you know? <laughs> for for me, it's not aging rock stars. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just randos. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever, ever had a homoerotic dream about a specific person. Yeah. It's always just kind of a dream construct. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so subconscious, and someday that person, I mean, be that person in real life, yeah, and and be blown away. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm sorry, sir. Be, be blown something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something will be blown away. <laughs> uh, Fifty minutes, I'll be blowing my top. <laughs> uh, so let's get into it. Uh, fun episode. Yeah. Uh, starts out like with this medical drama music as Billy Quizboy is walking down the hall of a hospital. Yep. Um, I thought this was fake credits. And was really excited oh, the yeah. first time I saw it. Yeah, just like um, uh, for for a fictional show about uh, about Billy being a you know being being a surgeon. He's uh, he's pulling a Kramer here. Uh, yep. <laughs> you know, uh, he he's not just somebody who does illegal surgery. Uh, you know, when he's kidnapped, uh, this is what he does like to relax. This is this is fun for him uh, to go yes. and uh, be this rock star. You know, this uh, the surgeon comes up and is really uh, really praising his work. This is one of those things that I think, uh, as much as this is a deftly uh, expressed episode, mm-hmm. I don't think this comes off perfectly, that Billy's doing this for fun, mm-hmm. you know, and that, like, he's he's not, like, a fraud. Right. Like, an active fraud that he, like, knows he's not getting paid and is just a hobby for him. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think that actually comes off very well. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they want to promote him. They can't, they don't have any of his paperwork, <laughs> you know, so he, he's lying about it, uh, you know, flop sweating. Uh, here and when the surgeon goes to uh, check his file, he runs away. Uh, he happens to run into a patient room that has King Gorilla mm-hmm. in it. Yeah, closing King, the door on him. <laughs> King Gorilla closing the door on him and uh, uh, seeing you know like like looking through the curtains uh, that are around the bed at uh, three figures emerging from the floor, rising up. They're wearing the uh, the pinstripe suits. These are the investors. We've seen them before. Uh, the three Draculas. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And Billy's really freaked out. Yeah. Uh, as they sink back, uh, the bald one smiles, you know, at him ter- as before uh, he kind of t- teleports away, like disappears into the floor mm-hmm. with King Gorilla's heart. Yes. King Gorilla had expected them. Uh, there was yeah. a the, there was a deal that was made to get him out of prison in exchange. Yep. Yes. Uh, so he's he's freaked out about that. There's a little bit of distance here where it's like Billy lives next door to a magician and right, all this right. stuff like him being that scared by this is a little bit silly. I can see him being um, scared of be of being made into a vampire because uh, he would recognize that vampires exist. Pete's skepticism that vampires exist is strange. It, 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 it's a little weird all over. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, like because he doesn't you know them, them coming for him also isn't pure like underlined. Yeah. Like yeah. it almost seems like he just saw this and there's a coquettish wave and that's it. Mm hmm. You know, yeah. um, I think this would be it, it's because we didn't see the them get the check. Right. You we know, didn't. the implied scene that that is never shown here is that these are the, he recognizes them explicitly mm-hmm. that they're the three people who gave him the check. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it might be a little bit land a little bit harder if they had shown that mm-hmm. um, they're back at the uh, the 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 trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, Pete is playing Guitar Hero with his <laughs> off-brand uh, Guitar Hero. Yeah. Uh, the horrible kind with the round buttons, Oof. which they made. Yeah. You, you know, if you had if you had to buy a second one, mm-hmm. uh, and you didn't have tons of money, yeah, uh, no. the worst, yeah, uh, the worst. T- 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 terrible, terrible. Uh, the best thrift yeah. store find that I ever had uh, was uh, like many years after uh, Guitar Hero kind of stopped being a thing. Found a uh, 360 Guitar Hero Five controller, like one of the really good ones, uh, mm-hmm. for uh, for three dollars. Nice, yeah, yeah. So that 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 was good because my uh, my rock band controller uh, broke. Uh, good the guitar mm. one because they never made a good one of those. 
Yeah, because you uh, shredded too hard. I did shred too hard. It melted under my hands. <laughs> You're doing that like with yep. your mouth. Yes, but it was it was still enough to, to yeah. damage the, it, while it, smashing the guitar. It, it couldn't take. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was it was mostly the smash in the guitars. It wasn't the Beatles yeah. and the Deedles. It was me backing over repeatedly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! If you if you held your hands in a chord position on the guitar mm-hmm. and then ran over the the strum bar or the, the the portion where you strum with a car would it make a, a chord i i probably not i think that uh, like if you ran over it like that would effectively mute the it would mute the strings right yeah, i guess that's it, true. it would just be pressing yeah. them down into the like in, into the neck so i don't i don't think that you would uh, i think the, i think that there wouldn't be so much a chord as there would be a smashing sound you could with a bike, maybe though. Maybe. Like, did I just invent the first bike tar? Uh, maybe. And not uh, the man with the bottom half of a bicycle and the top half of a man. <laughs> <laughs> the, uni- the the dreaded unicycle <laughs> cryptid. <laughs> and they say he haunts Portland. <laughs> he has he has <laughs> lungs of bagpipe. <laughs> yeah. AKA Gizmo Duck. Um, so oh. Billy's panicking. He's saying that they have to give everything back. Yeah, they got to go uh, return they, everything. Uh, everything, yeah. everything, everything. <laughs> the last, yep. the last one of those in this big, big exchange is the reveal of Robo Bo, uh, the robot yeah, Bo Duke. <laughs> yeah, they had the fat man. They had they had all these seventies uh, yeah. characters, and I love Pete's enthusiasm for Robo Robo Bo. Uh-huh. <laughs> It's Robo Bo. <laughs> Pete, 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 so um, hey, Pete uh, believes that he got permission for this because he asked uh, he asked Billy which uh, which which <laughs> which, Duke, which Duke boy he liked best. And it was Bo. Uh, yeah. And also, Pete just doesn't understand why people are creeped out by Robo Bo. He doesn't understand why people are uh, not into Robo Bo as much as he is. Uh, and like yeah. Robo Bo, I mean, m- much more functional than Asimo. Robo Bo is like fetching them beverages. This is a robot butler. Yeah, a, a robot yeah. boat. I would enjoy a robot robot. Yeah. Robo Bo Butler. <laughs> uh Billy is saying, no, no, we sold our souls to vampires. Uh, again, you know, kind of making a little bit of a leap here. Mm-hmm. Uh Pete says they're just they just sold shares, they're a company, they invested. Right. You know, we're conjectural technology. <laughs> uh someone pounds at the door. Uh, it's the investor. Uh, Billy puts on a cervical collar and says, you know, that's going to, it's going to stop them from biting. They're just getting a foam. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he really does not want to be turned into a vampire. No, no. Um, uh, they disappear with him screaming and Pete did nothing. He promised that he would help him <laughs> and he didn't. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I, I don't like this little bit with the cervical collar. There's, there's weird little things I would still cut in this. that I think are too stupid mm-hmm. that are always a part of a doc episode. Yeah. Like little bits of business that I think are the characters being too dumb. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's going to get better. This this episode tightens up. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Billy gets taken by the investors uh, and uh, Pete says, Robobo, get the conjecture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very funny. Yep. Oh, so Pete, uh, knowing that he has uh, so, some some powerful friends, he heads over to Sphinx HQ, waving around a fifty thousand dollar check, uh, asking them to help, uh, you know, to help rescue Billy. Um, and of course, this this is you know the hundredth person that we've seen this season not understanding what Sphinx's deal is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, Brock says like we're not mercenaries. Uh, we deal with people no one wants to deal with, and Pete says that's perfect because nobody wants to deal with me. That's super clever. Uh, very good. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, it's like you know, he's not getting it. Brock, do you want to explain it? Uh, mm-hmm. And he he basically you know does uh, this little bit of business with writing like somebody points a gun at you, you call the police. Lots of guns, SWAT, laser rifle in a costume, OSI laser rifle without a costume, Sphinx. Yes, you yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, and Pete makes a really good point here. It's like you owe Billy, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, for what you did to him in the past. Like they have treated Billy like shit and used him constantly. Like yeah. Billy's one of the weirdest things in this rewatch is realizing how tragic of a character Billy is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, they've yeah. been, uh, I mean, they, they've been scrambling his noggin something fierce for a very long time, you know? Yeah. Um, and, um, <laughs> you know, like Pete just doesn't come out and say it. Uh, and Hunter's like, no, no, you know, like, you you need to say what we did because there are no secrets here. Um, and this is like a team building exercise that Sphinx does where it's like, no, just, just say, just say something that you wouldn't, you, that, that you wouldn't want anybody else to know. Uh, Hunter misses his breasts. There's a woman inside of him yeah. screaming to be heard, which is very sad. Yep. Yeah. 
uh the sky pilot line is like my favorite uh, like more sky pilot as well please yes <laughs> hit a dog with a car last week yep until the owner i found it that way uh, i call them sky pilot here it's mile high uh, it is oh, mile high. high sorry yeah yeah sorry uh, that was that was that was that was my mistake yeah <laughs> that's his old name yeah mile high now it's cool. well it's it's hard to you know yeah when, get him, when he was part of the bible confused. crew he, he became sky pilot but mile high is his osi and sphinx name yeah yeah um yeah. <laughs> i like Good dog with a car last week <laughs> <laughs> and i just drove away uh brock jerked <laughs> off 12 times in one day just to see if he could uh which sounds yeah. like a fucking nightmare i i jerked off 12 times in one day what yeah, totally. Okay. Like when I was 13, I okay. jerked off like every 45 minutes on the minute. Jeez. It was ridiculous. When I was a teenager, that's all I did. I just, I'm sure I've done it 12 times in a day. Tw- 12 guarantee is... It. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I guarantee it. Like spaced out throughout the day and then yeah. like six times in a three hour period right before I go to sleep. Yes. Huh. Just I, I found some woods porn that was new to me and that was all it took. Maybe okay. there was full okay. penetration. I don't know. Uh-huh. But whatever it was, it, it cranked it good it, it revved yeah, me yeah yeah I, I worry about yeah. yanking it off um i i've definitely done it until i bled oh like it's, it's, jesus it's, christ it's, gary <laughs> oh no. Like, no when you're a teenager that's all you do i, I know like, I thought this was normal <laughs> <laughs> sorry i just the, 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 maybe maybe there's something about the, the the very frank way in what you're saying it i'm not sure uh to, so to, i when i say i'm sure <laughs> i just like you know, if you put a gun to my head and we're like, if this is not true, I'm going to shoot you. Uh huh. I would say, okay, I, I, I back down. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 10 easy. Okay. Easy. Okay. I, I, 10 easy. I feel like that wasn't like a challenge day for me though. Okay. As a kid. Yeah. It, it was ridiculous. Testosterone hit me real hard. Okay. Yeah. When it came on and now I miss its tender embrace <laughs> as I slowly <laughs> age into dust. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I don't mean to make you feel bad. It's just very, it's just very for the, the, the surety with which you said that, uh, that you, that you comported with, uh, what is presented as a joke here. It caught me off guard. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised that they they went with that number because <laughs> it's just like I don't know, man. Like, you can't keep talking like that if you want me to not laugh at it. Yeah, it's also like, especially as a teen, I was real quick on the trigger, so it wasn't like right. it this, wasn't a, this it was wasn't a lot a of time. It wasn't it, like you weren't. It was twelve keep. times, and probably took the amount of time of like a short movie. Yeah, you 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 were you weren't uh, you, you you weren't lighting candles and drawing a bath. Yeah. No, <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't have to set the mood. It was literally just like, oh shit, I'm gonna go lay down in the bathtub at my aunt's house. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and take care of something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got, um, we got a project to work on. Yeah, yeah. See, we share stuff like that in duck feed. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Tell me about all the dogs you hit, Carl. Cool. <laughs> I, I, um, I I hit a cat once and it ruined my entire yeah. month. Yeah, yeah, that's real sad. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I called the police about it though. There, there, there was no, there yeah. was no collar. Uh, it yeah. was like, it was fucking awful. That, that, that is good. Yeah. That is awful. Yeah. Sorry to bring up something that actually happened. I realized halfway through the sentence, they're <laughs> trying to make a reference to mile high and realized halfway through the sentence that you have a history with that. <laughs> they had a story. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I take care of my kitties. Um, I, yeah. I try, I try to make up my, I try to make up for my sin that way. Um, yeah. we get, we get the random guy, so yeah, just an unnamed, uh, Sphinx guy saying he had an erotic dream about, about Henry Rollins, even though he's straight as an arrow, he says, um, yep. and Charlie admits that he lied about a smell. Uh, it was actually yep. his, uh, it was actually his ass after some, uh, yeah. after some Not digestive distress. Away. Yes. Yeah. They said it was garbage. Yeah. Uh, Pete, oh, it says, you know, it says, Hey, like it's because he used Billy to infiltrate the guild. Hunter mm-hmm. throws a pen at him and says, that was the OSI. Are you going to blame the pen, yeah. you know, for, for this thing that hits you, mm-hmm. you know, making the gun control argument kind of, yeah, yeah. uh, Hunter grabs, uh, the check and is going to give it back to Pete. Uh, but then he sees the name on it and changes his tune. I'm a little bit bummed out that they wouldn't just help Billy. Yeah. You know, I think Pete's making a good point here. He is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it turns out, you know, uh, it's, it, it's, they recognize this. Yes. The, uh, the investors, the, you know, you're, you're in luck white. You're the only person who's taken money from the investors and lived to panic about it. Right. Right. He sees the, uh, the, the, the global consolidated insurance or something like that, uh, yeah. is, uh, is, you know, as the name of the endorser. So, okay. This is the lead that we have. Um, yep. so cut over to Billy, uh, Billy wakes up <clears throat> and he's got monstroso and the investors, uh, looming over him. Uh, Monstroso sends the investors away because Billy is obviously freaked out about it. Um, and he explains to Billy that they're both in the same boat. 
you know, they were, they both Clever had, a little bit. yes, <laughs> when, once we realized that they are on a gigantic boat compound, um, uh, they both had needs and the investors, uh, stepped in. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, Monstroso took Billy because he's one of the most talented surgeons alive and he doesn't have a medical degree. Mm-hmm. Um, Billy's very defensive about this. You know, some of the best artists are self taught self taught. And he's like, yes. And so many of them live in sad trailers infested with albinos scurrying from Xbox to PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Uh, very good. <clears throat> yeah. Living off your accomplishments. Um, yeah. I think Billy is also a little slow on the uptake to not let go of the vampire thing. Yes. Yeah. Here. That's also a, a patented doc hammer. Writing people is too stupid for Gary. Yes. Yeah. Uh, kind of thing. Right. Um, uh, you know, and so th- that I think is a little bit helped along here. Uh, because, you know, Monster also explains like, yes, you're not going to be able to go back to your old life. You won't be going back to your old life. Um, because, um, you're going to receive the true gift or, you know, immortality. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which which is which is yes, that's vampire-y, But he also kidnapped him because he's a surgeon. Yes, yeah. Like Billy just forgets that for the entire thing. <laughs> yes, yeah. you know the reason why he might be chosen. He's he, he's not spending a lot of time thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pete is showing uh, Sphinx the scene of Billy's disappointed or, or disappearance. <laughs> well, he was also disappointed um, in his friend for not helping him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it should have been me. You know, I got that Draco Malfoy thing uh going on i would have made a better vampire mm-hmm. uh robo robobo comes out and offers them lemonade and there's you know why does it walk like it's got to take a dump <laughs> why does it walk like that <laughs> uh you know nobody likes it yeah yeah Every, everybody's uh pretty pretty freaked out about it shirley runs uh a, a soil sample from the investor's footprints around the uh, around the trailer uh there's sea salt in them and specifically it's sea salt from the atlantic near the equator so they are going to need a boat this is where short leave misses the sphinx echo because uh they you know something bad happened to the sphinx boat yeah he was he was uh he was distracted you know my doorbell just went off and it only works i would say yeah (laughs) you'd be one out of every 10 times okay i go out there and press it nothing happens okay and what that means is that randomly while working or living or sleeping okay i just hear that i hear the 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 clock, Big Ben. Uh huh. It's so fucking weird. Yeah, that's pretty loud. Uh, I'm leaving, too. You're leaving this in. Like, it's yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, huh. you know, just it, it's not a big deal. It means I had a package show up. I'm going to ignore it until we're done recording. <laughs> but isn't that like people, listeners? Isn't that weird? That's weird. There's a random doorknob. It, it it's a kind of torture. Yeah. Or doorbell. Um. So they need a boat. Uh, yes. Pete says he's going to go along, but Hunter puts him in a safe house with hatred. <laughs> <laughs> the safe house being the venture compound, not a place I would yes. call safe, but what have you. <laughs> the, the safe room specifically. Yes. And has yeah. hatred babysit him basically. And <laughs> hatred, uh, you know, he's showing off this boil on his foot. He's like, you'd think that, but boils don't ooze. <laughs> My touch, it's real gooey. It's like <laughs> real gross. Yeah. Oh, foot maladies. No, no, thank you, sir. <laughs> So, um, so they need, uh, they need this boat, uh, and they head down to, uh, JJ's thinking, okay, the X2 is going to be here. They've got that, uh, supersonic hydrofoil or whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, JJ's not here though. He's not on spider skull Island. He is up, uh, p- putting together gargantua too. Uh, yeah, and he's, he's gone up, he's above and they think that he meant he dead. Uh, he, he yes. died. Yeah. yeah, a little little joke there. Mm-hmm. Um, but he left the sea captain here to keep the museum open, uh, and they're the first visitors. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, the museum on the island, very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and also the boat has been uh, has been gutted uh, because JJ needed the part. Uh, <laughs> Hunter tries to light up a cigarette, and pirate captain explains that they can't smoke. Uh, JJ outlawed mm-hmm. it. They are a sovereign nation, though, so they can grow their own pot. And gay marriage is illegal. They legalize the gay marriage. <laughs> yep. Uh, and sure, sure leave uh, plans to retire here seems like the logistics of living on spider skull island would be pretty rough like i don't think there's like a kroger mm. nearby you know yeah where do they get food yeah um the uh pirate they just need a boat and pirate captain says you know you can go to my ship manny's song and he's like manny's song is beautiful he's like he's like oh it's you know this girl manny I, I she left me and i never you know i never saw her again and they're like it's a very beautiful story and shore leave says that's you know it, that's because it's from degrassi <laughs> um you know so a little, little degrassi reference you yeah. uh here in in things that age real weirdly in the commentary they're marveling that drake mm-hmm. is a big star yeah uh, who's formerly on degrassi and now he's 
you know, he's huge. He's, he's a pop rapper that broke through to where I know who he is. Yeah. Which means yeah. he's real big. Mm-hmm. Which, which means that he's over. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. <laughs> Very funny. Um, I love this setting sail joke. This to me, this is the good version of the clear. Yes. Joke yeah. From the like, last episode. <laughs> he's like, all right, let's set sail. You think, okay, this is going to be like a, a just, <laughs> just a, scene, a scene cut. Like, no, that's actually instructions. We need to set the sails. Yeah. 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 Uh, back in the safe room, there's some business with hatred playing a guitar and improvising a song about Princess Tiny Feet. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably could have dropped most of this stuff. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, it doesn't doesn't go anywhere. Could, and, cut in as he's finishing yeah. the song, not in the middle of like the third verse. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Billy is play is suiting up in Monstroso's locker room here, getting ready to play squash, talking about all this, uh, these activities they are going to do where they say, you know, he's saying goodbye to his body. Yes. Uh, there Billy includes himself in that, but Monstroso never actually says like, we're going to do it. Yeah. I, I, I love Monstroso's idea of the, uh, just the perfect last day. It's all this kid it, stuff, you know, it, it's very similar to mine. And I also, th- there's a lot giant checkers and giant Legos for Monstroso are regular checko- checkers and regular Legos. But what if they're giant for him? It'd be like that episode of review. <laughs> well, they, they, they would be as big as Billy. Yeah. They'd be like, Billy would be a little Lego man in the car. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that'd be pretty incredible. Maybe that's what Monstroso uh, wants. <laughs> I'm just imagining Monstroso twisting Billy's torso off and sticking it onto a plastic new torso to give him new pants. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Um, uh, so uh Billy explains, like, yeah, all of that uh sounds neat, but they're you know, they're before I say goodbye to my body, there's some more adult stuff that I wanted to you know wanted to do. Uh, and this is yeah. the, this this is brought back later. Monster so uh, thinks about this while they're playing racquetball. Um, I love I love this racquetball uh, scene because Monster is, is just good. standing in the center and his reach is wide enough that he does not have to move. Whereas Billy is uh, like running back and forth running like his life court. depends on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah real good. Uh, this is cut short because Monstroso has some heart problems. Uh, he mentions that his heart is dying, which again I think Billy should have put two and two together here. Yeah, um, you know, no Legos for him. Right. Oh. Um, Sphinx are below deck on the pirate ship, oh, trying to figure out where Billy could have gone to. His hand emits a tracer pulse, so if they get close enough, it, you know, that'll it'll, it'll put them in the general area. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're they're analyzing the check. Uh, they thought they found a palm print. It doesn't match anything, but it turns out it's a giant thumbprint. Yes. And Shirley gets to say it. Oh my God! It's monstroso. Hmm. Um. Yeah. yeah. Cut over to monstroso signing his contract. Uh, and the investors carry him over to an operating table. Uh, and then we get an extended reference to uh, the, 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 you know, the, the sex scene from Bram Stoker's Dracula. We've got Billy on his, yeah. uh, on his round bed. Uh, and these three, yep. uh, these three sex workers appear around him. Are you ready for my fan theory? Yes. I still think these are the investors. <laughs> Because hear hear me out. Okay. Later, Monstroso is like those are prostitutes. Mm-hmm. They phase up through the fucking floor. They do phase they up do through the, the exact, floor. They they have the visual like language, semiotic mm-hmm. language of the investors. They do. And then as soon as they leave, the investors pop in. Uh huh. I think the investors shape shift and sucked Billy off. Okay. Yeah. I was expecting this to be confirmed in the art book or commentary Mm -hmm. (laughs) or a later episode. None of those things have happened, but it doesn't follow that Mm -hmm. they have magic powers when Monstroso is like, those were just prostitutes. Yeah. Like Billy literally sees them phase into the floor exactly like the investors do. Yeah. You're, you're right. Who knows? The investors sucked off Billy. Yeah. And it's weird. Like, I, I, it's weird to think of anybody uh, d- doing an oral on Billy. Um, sure. Yeah. What's it like? I mean, he's real little, but like, what's the whole thing like? I, I got no idea. Don't How's know? the kit? How's the caboodle? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I don't have any answers for you. <laughs> yeah. I, this is the kind of stuff I wanted from the commentary. Yeah. And yeah. I, I get that it's a reference to Bram Stoker's Gra- Dracula. So that's why they, they phase through, but you can't do that and have the joke later where he's like, those are prostitutes. They would have yeah. said they were Charlie's angels. Yeah. We, we, yeah, we, we, we shape shifting investors. Yeah. We, and, and also like we, we it, it has not been demonstrated to us that the investors can lend their power to anybody else. Yeah. Yes. No, no. Yeah, I, I think the investor sucked off Billy. Yeah. And like, there's not really a contradiction around that. I, you know, mm-hmm. the prostitutes thing just could be a monstroso making an assumption. Yeah. 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 Or maybe the Billy's, the, the investors needed that seed for something later. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe they're pulling know, like a, they got cut off. Yeah. They were, they, they were, they were pulling a, uh, 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 a, a gunslinger there. They were doing the, uh, doing, making a new Mordred. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. 
I don't know. I'm just I, I'm I uh, I was very disappointed not to hear that reference in the commentary. Yeah, yeah. And so. uh, it, like the, the, the uh, likely likely the, the the form that we identify as the investors, that's probably not them. You know? Oh, that, I guarantee it's not. They're like the spirits of the wind. Yeah. Or whatever. Like they, when, once we find out what they are, like mm-hmm. they are evil forces. They're not just guild operatives. Yeah. The, 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 I mean, just we, we can just say it. They are whatever uh, whatever Killinger is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we get a good Gargantua <laughs> too. Climax for those guys pretty quick. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one of them sucks them off. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, yeah. as, as he is approaching, uh, the culmination, uh, his hand starts beeping and then he starts spraying fire extinguisher foam. This was surely activating the homing beacon <laughs> and also the fire yes. extinguisher by accident. I, lo- I, I love the fact that Billy has just had this inspector gadget shit on him this entire time. He, he had all these powers. <laughs> yeah. He didn't know. Yeah. Uh, it, I don't know whether he actually got to nut or if this is a premature ejaculation mm. joke. You know, who knows? Again, yeah. the kind of stuff I wanted from the commentary. Right. Uh, the one scene that I think justifies the hatred and Pete stuff mm-hmm. uh, is the next. They're in the the room. Um, you know, in sleeping bags, getting ready to go to sleep. And one thing is, it explains away the shitty rape joke. Yes, it does. From the end of season three. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hatred found Billy unconscious and just cuddled him. Yeah, like he didn't. You know, he didn't have sex with Billy while he was unconscious. Yeah, he he, uh, he 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 saw him. He was vulnerable. He was safe and cute. I just wanted to protect him. You say I can see yeah. why he's your best friend. So maybe not yeah. the best thing. That probably was not uh, something that Billy would have preferred. But at the very least, yeah. it is not as ghastly uh, as it yeah, uh, not, as it was implied to be. Non cuddling, I, I will I will take. Yeah, you and know, it, that's, it, it's not great. But it, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just in, in exchange for just a uh, uh, hatred, not like backsliding in that way with a, you know, yeah. Bull. Yeah. Uh, and him saying, you know, I can see why he's your best friend. And Pete, such a douchebag is like, he's yeah. not my best friend. Rusty is. Yeah. And hatred calls him out, you know, to his face. Finally. Yeah. You know, he's like, you're a star fucker. Like yeah. you, you just, you know, Rusty's kind of famous, but this, this guy, you know, has been with you. You know, through thick and thin. Yeah, you live. You, you uh, live together. You you do everything together. You're fucking inseparable. How in the world could anybody but Billy be your best friend? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and there's there's this gets a little payoff as well mm-hmm. uh, a little bit later, which I like. Um, so the Sphinx pirate ship rolled into the uh, the the floating compound mm-hmm. uh, that ship, and we get some action. Uh, they suit up uh, to swim in. Brock has the classic scuba suit, and Shoreleaf has the genital formal wear, a so, little uh, speedo, <laughs> speedo tuxedo uh, thing. I love the bit in the commentary where they're like trying to explain it to the animators. Yeah, they just because I ever... know exactly what that is. I see ads for that all the time from Wish and shit <laughs> on, on Facebook. It's like, how do you not know what the speedo tuxedo is? Like, come on, dude. <laughs> and I love, I love Doc being like, of course I got one, and I got the elephant one. I know exactly what it means with the elephant one as what's, well. What's the elephant like, one? It's, it's it's an elephant's head with a huge trunk oh, okay. as a speedo. Okay. Uh, right. Wish tries to sell me all this shit on Facebook. Huh. Um, yeah. Even though lately it's switched to something called Good Belly, which just gives me absolutely fucking wretched looking novelty foods from around the country. Ugh. I've got about 20 of them saved and I'm, I've been saving them for a... a abject suffering rainy day <laughs> so next time we get something real bland i've got i've got a couple things in the tank for abject suffering and one of them is us going through these foods that look Ooh. absolutely wretched but are expensive and you have to mail order them yeah to have is, them shipped is, across the country is it doing is it doing that thing that some banner ads do where like it's a small like super close-up picture on something that, lo- that looks like fucking gore and it says this magical food will make you live forever or something like that or Mm-mm. just like making it say, no, like I, good belly ads they're just yeah. like get food from this place huh okay you know, and at first I thought it was fake or like challenge food. And then I saw some like real restaurants on there that I'd heard of. Huh? So, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I look forward to that uh, whenever, <laughs> whenever that is pulled out for abject suffering. Um, but yeah, their mission is to uh, rescue Billy, eliminate Monstroso and the investors. This will really get, uh, you know, the, the, this is an element of the guild that is operating uh, outside of the uh, usual agreement. So it is Sphinx mm-hmm. uh, doing, do, doing its thing. They dive into the water and sure leave immediately re- regrets not wearing a proper insulating suit. Uh, just he's, yeah. he immediately starts freezing. It's cold. Uh, Billy signs the contract thinking it's a vampire uh, contract. Not a thing. Um, <laughs> the uh, Monstroso says, no, there's, there's a misunderstanding. Um, this was your diploma. It's, mm-hmm. it's legit and legal. That's your gift. Yeah. Um, you know, your immortality is that you will uh, you know, live forever in your deeds. Mm-hmm. Uh, my immortality is that 
I'm going to get a new heart. No. King Gorilla, you know, you're going to put his heart inside me. Mm -hmm. This is, this is an actual thing for people who suffer uh, from, I I don't know if gigantism is the right word, right right word for that. There's a, there's a medical term for it, but people who are larger than usual, the hearts have to work harder um, and often they die of heart failure. Uh, oh, Andre, happened the, to, uh, Andre the Giant. Yeah, he wasn't doing a lot of uh, favors to himself with all that wine that he drank. But uh, but Andre yeah. the Giant, you know, candle that burns twice as hard. You know, turn burns twice yeah. as bright. Yeah, yeah. That world's tallest man guy. Yeah, that guy didn't have a good time. No, no. It's, it, the, no despite his car choices. Oh, like <laughs> yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Billy, you know, he, he, here he is thinking he's got this date with destiny. And in reality, it's just, this, it's, it's another fucking illegal surgery. <laughs> like yeah. it's all that's happened to him this season. Yep. Uh, he, you know, he's, he's very pissed off about it. Uh, he doesn't, you know, and, and Ron Sorso says it's not illegal. Mm-hmm. You're going to get credit for doing this. Yes. You know, it, this is your gift and it's kind of a nice moment for Billy. Yeah. Like, here's some recognition. Uh, and this is what makes him uh, sympathetic to it when, you know, Brock and Shore leave, uh, show up, create a distraction for the goons, and they get in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Billy's doing surgery, or getting this little montage uh, <laughs> between Brock and Shore leave fighting the guards and Billy doing the surgery. I, lo- I love the, just the, the, the size difference between Billy and Monstroso. It means that he has to, like, literally climb into the chest cavity to do it. It's like a VR experience. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, uh, Shore leave sneaks up on a guard. You know, he has a boner, uh, you know, on him. Uh, Brock fights the investors, and it turns out the investors almost tricked them into shooting each other. Yes. Yeah. I love yeah. I love Brock's out. Magic guys. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. Not into it. Yep. Uh, you know, they, they take a point. I love this little bit where Brock's like, sure, leave. We have a cool job. You know, it's, it's very sweet. It's <laughs> yeah. totally cool. Like, yeah, it's yeah. very fun, just their enthusiasm. And they're, they're, they're just joking. They're, they're, they're here in this yeah. strange place going after a giant. You know, the first one to find a talking harp wins. Yeah. <laughs> just that. I love that. Uh, for people who don't know what that is, that's that's a Jack and the Beanstalk, right? Uh, yeah, the yeah. 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 Jack and the Beanstalk. Uh, just, uh, yeah. the, you know, the, the longer versions in, uh, include that. So weird little fairy yeah. tales. Uh, uh, obscura. Yeah. Fairy tales are nonsense, as we'll get into in the next thing we're recording today. That yes. we won't reference here. But just a lot <laughs> of dumb shit happens that's still cool. Yes. Uh, so Brock walks in on Billy. Uh, he's like, you know, Pete sent me. And Billy's like, you know, I don't believe you. Uh, I'm leaving. And Brock says he was willing to give us $50,000 to save you. You know, mm-hmm. it's a nice little moment. Like, you know, implying that Pete does care. He's just putting on this image. Yes. You know? Yeah. You know, and he just, yeah, Billy wants, he's, he's ready to, to leave White behind. He sees him as dead weight. I've got this new life of uh, fame and fortune here. And Brock tells him, you know, like, hey, do you really, is, is this really what you want? You know, the, the, to make this kind of compromise uh, specifically yeah. to, br- you know, to bring Monstrosa back and therefore in some way be responsible for anybody that Monstrosa's or- organization hurts. He says, you know, that blood never washes off, uh, washes off your hands, you know, just yeah. saying like, Hey, re- really, yeah. really consider what you're, you know, what you're getting in this deal. Is it worth it to you? Okay, you know, kind of re- Mon- the world is better without it. Monstroso. Yes. Yeah. You know, and he says, like, listen, I am a doctor. Mm-hmm. You know, I may not have a medical school, but I am a doctor. I'm a damn good one. And mm-hmm. I took an oath. Yeah. You know, you know, can't 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 let him die. You know, that just that that that, that is a principle for me. You know, uh great great greater even than what you're than than, than, than what you're saying. You know, so yep. he's you know, just you have your principles, I have mine, you know, and they compliment each other on their on their uh, cowboy speeches, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's, uh, it's nice. You, you know, it's like Brock actually ends up respecting Billy. Yeah, it's a it's a really nice little moment. Yeah. Uh, Brock lets him finish. Our post credits is monstroso in recovery. Uh, you know, he squeezes a stress ball and explodes it. Um, and it turns out they're not doing normal recovery. They're in a sphinx hanger. And Brock asks if monstroso is well enough to be killed yet. <laughs> uh, the wiki says this is a reference to the American uh, execution system. Ah, uh, that's a stretch. <laughs> I think it's just kind of a joke, but yeah, yeah I don't think this is the cutting. Uh, you know, capital punishment commentary. No. That Wikipedia Walt thought it was. Yeah. Um, no, I saw that too. And it was just a little bit like, ah, you guys are being kind of silly. Um, the, uh, yeah, good, good episode. Again, mm-hmm. I think kind of light on jokes. Yeah. But, but real, uh, you know, I like what it does. It sets up the next episode really well. And the next episode is, is masterful. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't wait. So I went ahead and watched it. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Op- Operation uh, it, PRO. 
Yeah. Yeah. What, what a wonderful finale, not just of season four of the Venture Brothers, but of any like season. Mm-hmm. And when I read that it was, you know, a lot of people thought it was the season finale of the or series finale. Mm-hmm. I believed it. Yeah. Like it would have been a good series finale the, for, for a long time. This was the last episode that I had seen just because I fell off of watching it. Uh, when it was current after that, and I was just kind of mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, yeah, Venture Brothers. Like I see that they're doing it intermittently under every once in a while. I'm fine. Not watching season five. It's okay. Um, yeah, and because season four ends so strong. It does. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah. And that's, that's the episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, look forward to next episode. It's gonna be a long one because it's an extra long episode. It is. Uh, after that, we'll do our wrap up and then it's on to, uh, to season five. S five baby. Uh, people have expressed some interest in us doing some source material shit, mm-hmm. uh, things like that. Uh, I don't know when we'll sprinkle those in. Yeah. We we have a bonfire side chat problem where I don't want to end the show on Sharky's machine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like that feels dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, so we'll see uh, if we do that and if we do it, when. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll try and figure out a place to put it. Uh, it's also yeah. a matter that like preparing for an episode of this, you know, watching a 22 minute show. Um, is, uh, is signing on to do a full length movie, uh, in, in, in place of that also like comes against, uh, scheduling problems with doing prep for other yeah. stuff. So, you know, just one yeah, of those things. I know that sounds like a, a, a wussy problem, but no. we, uh, do a lot of shit. Yeah. Uh, for, for, I mean, and like for just, to, just to let people know for me watching an epi- like watching a 22 minute episode of the show takes me an hour because of taking notes during it and like pausing and mm. going back to it and you know, um, uh, double checking and making sure that I, uh, that, that, that I caught that right in the subtitles and stuff like that. So it does, you know, expand, let's say, uh, yeah. Commentary as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, research, things like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, support us on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash duck feed TV. Mm-hmm. Leave us ratings, reviews on Apple podcast or podcast addict and tell your friends and until next time, Go, Go Team, team venture. venture.